Hi, John Schieber here from TechCrunch with Lorenzo Simonelli from G, the, the president and CEO of GE Oil and Gas. Correct. Um, I got it right. You Amazing. Did. Um, so, I, given everything that's in the news today, I, I feel like I, or in the news recently, I feel like I have to start out. Is there a future for GE Oil and Gas <laughs> given where the price of oil is right now? Um, when you look at the markets, how does that impact your business? So the good thing is I don't look at the oil price every day and I'm an <laughs> optimist. And when you look at the macro trend and mm. you look at the macro needs of the world, there is definitely a future within oil and gas. Uh, you've got a growing population, you've got a growing middle class. And when you look at the energy needs, you know, gas is the cleanest hydrocarbon. And so you look at the future natural usage, gas, yes, yeah. natural gas. And right. then as you look at LNG, you look at CNG usage. So we see a continued growth trajectory going out the next decade and 20 years, and we feel good about the future. Clearly, there's going to be volatility as we go through that. And volatility is not new to this industry. You've right. seen the price of oil go through many cycles before, right. and I'm sure it will go through many cycles in the future. But at GE, we really stay focused on the macro trends and stay focused on what, what are the main needs and the fundamental needs are there. So I, I, obviously we're a tech blog. Um, when, when you think about uh, an old line industry, uh, such as oil and gas, which is over a century old, um, what role do new technologies play in, in extractive industries? What, what, where, how does GE operate with or interact with startups when it comes to sort of this space? Uh, look, I, I think this is, is an exciting space and it gets viewed as an old industry, non-technology. That couldn't be further from the truth. When you think about what's happened from a technology change with fracturing, when you look at what's happening also with the digital age, people don't realize how much digital and really the fourth industrial revolution is impacting the geo oil and gas space. And we're at the forefront of it. And we're applying both uh, startups, but then also we've established within GE basically our own GE Digital. Mm. And we've created our own platform called Predex that mm. now we're taking to the industrial world. We are a digital industrial company, and that's the way we see future growth. And we're applying it to all of the industries. So are you, are you working with startups now? Does, when, when GE looks at the market, do you say, are, are there things that y'all are targeting? Are you investing in startup companies at this point? Yeah, so we actually have a whole spectrum of ways in which we interact with startups. So okay. there's a ventures group that we house within GE. And what we do is we make small equity investments in some startups that are applicable to our industry. Mm. And then also, we as a business within GE Oil & Gas, we create our own startups within GE Oil & Gas. Right. So if you look at, uh, I'll give you an example, because I think sometimes it's great to think about of examples. The GE Oil & Gas space has a lot of uh, pipelines. What we're creating across pipelines is an intelligent ecosystem to be able to now monitor a pipeline really virtually. So you think about the integration of drones that are surveying the top of the pipeline. You think about drones that actually have the ability to sense right. whether there's leakage, whether there's actual air, what's the moisture. Then you apply it also into an ecosystem mm -hmm. which says, what's happening to the weather? So what's going to be the weather impact onto the pipeline? You can apply the same things of an offshore platform, right. and that's what we're working on, both within G oil and gas, but then also partnering with entrepreneurs and startups as well. When, when you look out, uh, at, at the, the sort of future of, of, of the business, um, you, you not only deal with oil and gas, but also other extractive industries, and then you're also doing uh, efficiency around water and, 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 and uh, resources as well, I guess. Um, how much of the business going forward, or your focus going forward, is on efficiency versus sort of extraction or, or technologies around um, making the oil and gas business cleaner? So, versus. And again, you look at it, we've really got two main focus areas. Right. And uh, we benefit by the aspect that as GE Oil & Gas, we're part of GE. So we've got the GE store that we can go to to take a lot of the different tools and different products that are mm. utilized in a GE power, in an aviation, a healthcare. And then we really use that package to go out to the industry and drive both optimization as well as then with an eco element and mm -hmm. provide the best outcomes from an ecological perspective. GE for many years has had the focus on eco-imagination. Right. And so everything that we focus on has both elements. Best outcomes for our customers from a productivity perspective as well as then eco-imagination. 
I'll give you another example. If you think about, um, you know, we talk a lot about the impact of carbon, CO2, yeah. and we're looking at ways in which we can actually take CO2 and use it within fracturing. And so you capture CO2, and then you use it instead of water into the fracturing of wells. Right, right, right. So that actually is a benefit both from a productivity perspective to mm. the industry. It's also a benefit from an ecological standpoint because you're no longer using the water. And those are the type of technologies we're investing in. In, in the environment that we're in post sort of Paris and, and, and the COP agreements and, and, and sort of everything that's, that's going on, how is there a sense in GE to shift more towards sustainability um, and, and, and look at, at renewable resources as, as more of an option. Will that be done through GE oil and gas or is that sort of through power or, or another so, aspect of the business? So we have an energy mix right. and we've always said that you know, the future lies in having an energy mix that's both renewable focus, gas focus, oil focus. And if you think about the future growth and the future energy needs, there's going to be an element of all of them. Right. Uh, you're not going to be able to see a complete elimination of any one of them. And so through GE Power, we obviously focus on right. the right, right. elements yeah, of uh, some of the utilities and power generation through steam as mm -hmm. well as through gas. We have the renewables business that has both the offshore wind, onshore wind. We have the water. We have hydro. So we provide the full element. And again, I think... Uh, you know, you look at a company such as GE, we've got a sustainability aspect. We care about the communities in which we participate. And so we provide technology with the element of sustainability. For us, it all goes hand in hand. Mm. And there's no better time than when an industry is in need, like the oil and gas right now, to provide solutions that give them productive outcomes, but then also ecological ones. If you were to think about your wish list for, for new technologies, and again, TechCrunch, we're, we're sort of startup focused, if, if you could buy sort of anything, if you were to say, hey, startup company that's doing X, Y, or Z, we would love to hear from you. What are the things that are on the wish list? What are you looking for that's not sort of in, 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 the, in the wallet right now? Or, or just, you know, yeah. So, so if, if you could buy anything, what would it be? If you had a dream technology for oil and gas... Well, and more than buy anything, I think there's a lot about partnering as well and right. creating that ecosystem. And given that we're on Techno Tech Crunch and given that we've got an opportunity to reach out to everybody, what I'd say is we've got a platform called Predix. Predix is what uh, an iOS system is to your iPhone and also to your Galaxy. Uh, yeah. And what we're creating for the oil and gas industry, but also for the industrial world, is really now an ecosystem based on Predix. So we can go and monitor our equipment, but then we're also looking to partner with third parties to provide the apps that create that ecosystem. And you think of uh, companies such as Sky Futures that we're partnering with. There's many where we're bringing them mm -hmm. in to create that ecosystem for offshore platforms, onshore drilling, right. et cetera. So how, how does that work? What, what is... What, is the, 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 what are the technological holes that you're looking to fill in the Predix platform that you're, you're working with these partners on? So Predix provides uh, really the uniform platform that people can now build upon. Uh, so what we're looking to do is take a, an offshore platform. Right. Uh, today, an offshore platform needs to be supervised and you need to have uh, manning of somebody that goes out to the rig. Uh, you may need a diver. So there's a lot of elements that actually require somebody to go and intervene. If you're able now to create an ecosystem where you've got autonomous underwater vehicles, you've got the monitoring of those autonomous underwater vehicles, you've got drones that are sensing what's happening and also looking at uh, potential corrosion, then you capture all of that information yep. into one system and you give an outcome to the operator that is unique. Right. That today doesn't exist. We're trying to create and pull together all of those elements right. to give the best outcome. So, so Predix is the platform, but then if there are UAV startups or, or sort of drone startups that are looking at these kinds of, uh, of, of, these kinds of issues, they should come to you. They Correct. And, you also, and also, if they're, uh, if they're building apps that can build onto Predix yeah. from a software perspective. So the hardware is one thing you need the software as well. And right. we're looking for an integrated ecosystem. And it's exciting. 
Because if you think about the power of the future, it it's that one percent. Everyone agrees. You're you see, so, it's so exciting. The power of one percent improvement yeah. is huge to the bottom line. Yeah. And also, it's ecological. Focus right. as right. well, so sustainability. Well, yeah, I, I mean, so software is a big driver of efficiency, and I, I think with that, I will let you go, sir. It All is right, a pleasure. thank you very much. Very pleasure much. meeting you. Very much Thanks. pleasure. Very pleasure much. meeting you. Very much Thanks. pleasure.